Ta-da, I did it. So uh, I'm Todd Parker, I'm the project lead for the mobile project. And I'm just gonna give you a rundown of what's been happening. So uh, we're a pretty new project. Uh, we hit 1.0 eight months ago. And I think it was two years ago when I was actually still working on pictures. So it's uh, pretty early on. Um, in those eight months, we've done uh, 1.0, we followed it up with a maintenance release in January. And then we came out with 1.1.0, which was um, our first dot release. And that was really where we rethought how we could do our transitions to make them a lot smoother. And uh, did quite a bit of work on bringing fixed toolbars to the, to the library, true fixed toolbars using CSS position fixed. Uh, so that was sort of an epic effort. Um, currently, we're working on a maintenance release for that. And then we're also now working on 1.2, which is going to bring a new widget, which is pop-up. And I'll get into those in more detail in a little bit later. Uh, but first, I just want to talk a little bit about uh, how the project's been doing. So from a uh, popularity perspective, we're doing really well. I think we're off to a really good start here, uh, off with a bang. The, the thing that I think is actually really interesting is if you look at who is using the library and where, um, that's where things maybe are a little different than what you might expect. So uh, you'll notice that the US isn't even in the top 10, which is kind of cool. Uh, we, we do have some strength where a lot of people speak English, so we're in number four, which is kind of cool for English. Go English. Uh, so, uh, so I think that's interesting. And I noticed that on Twitter too, so I'm, I maintain the, the Twitter account, and I can't read more than half of the tweets out there, which I think is actually really cool. That was one of the, the goals of the library is to not leave anyone out and not take such a US-centric approach with uh, device so support. So, you know, and I think that really comes down to, you know, our goals as a library of, you know, really not leaving anyone behind. And that I think these numbers are kind of bearing out the theory that uh, broad compatibility with all devices and accessibility from the start is something that uh, is really important and that this library fills that gap really well. Because prior to this, every other library was just WebKit. And, you know, if you're a large company, if you're like Disney or you're Ikea, uh, you know, you really want to make sure that you're reaching the broadest possible audience out there. And that's why we're seeing companies like this adopt jQuery Mobile, because they can actually reach the greatest number of people. Uh, from an ecosystem perspective, uh, we're, we're really, as a project, focused on just building um, the best set of touch-optimized UI components out there uh, that work on all these different browsers, and keeping ourselves really focused on that area. And so there's actually a really nice ecosystem kind of growing up around jQuery Mobile, you know, MVC frameworks or tooling to let people, you know, use our front end, but use it in all sorts of different ways. And so we've been collecting these on the jQuery Mobile site. You can check them out. But it's tons and tons. There's a metric ton of uh, tools and frameworks out there. It's also, I think, because we use a pretty declarative uh, format where you're using uh, just simple HTML. Uh, tooling seems to be really easy for people to build around jQuery Mobile, so it's built into things like Dreamweaver, which is really cool. Uh, Adobe's also just added support for building custom themes in Fireworks. Uh, Microsoft did quite a bit of stuff when they talked about MVC4, where they're now uh, really heavily in, uh, investing in jQuery Mobile with tutorials and building in a lot of uh, the library into um, the IDEs and things like that. And to that end, Microsoft also just uh, recently announced a theme, and this is also a really uh, important thing about the library. We've, from the beginning, said, you know, we want to build interfaces that look like your brand, not look like a particular operating system, because we're really kind of going at it from the approach of um, the web browser, and then you can wrap it into an app. But the the first step of the library is a web browser, so um, it's sort of inappropriate to, in a browser, be like, hey, let's make this thing look like Windows Phone 7. But when you're building an app with Cordova, for example, uh, you do want it to look a lot more native. Uh, in some situations. So this is a really exciting thing where we can focus on building things that are easily themable, and then either third parties or these OEMs can actually build their themes uh, on top of it using the same framework. So there's a, a really cool Windows Phone theme right now. Um, a third party uh, guy actually came up with a pretty nice iOS theme. So you know, if you are building a, an, an app, you, you know, have these at your disposal, which is cool. We also have quite a bit of plugins now. So there's a pretty rich set. If, if we don't have a widget in our library right now, um, there might already be a plugin out there for you that's compatible and that uses the theme framework and sort of our patterns. And uh, so that's interesting. And what we do is we're also keeping an eye on what plugins people are building and saying, is that something that we want to start 
building as part of our library, and we'll talk about that with a pop-up, because that was one of the, the plugins that there were three plugins already for pop-ups, so that seemed like a solution we needed to bring. Um, the other thing is, as a project, you know, we really want to make sure that um, you know, we're growing the team. We have a lot of work to do. So we have 70 test devices in our lab. You saw that picture. Um, and that's just uh, the mobile phones, tablets, and e-readers. And then we also, as a library, make sure that everything works on all the desktop devices as well. So all those browsers. So there's a ton of testing. There's a ton of bugs. Uh, there's just a ton of work. So we've been really growing the team. When we, when we were building 1L, we had a pr pretty small team. Um, there are basically uh, five people working on 1L, and uh, then we had Tyler, who actually helped us build Theme Roller. Um, Kin from Adobe and Tyler from Adobe, both are kind of being reassigned, so now we're down to four people, and what we've been trying to do is, is grow the team. So in the last few months, we've actually brought on six people, and that's really been incredibly helpful. So uh, Anne is now our documentation lead. Uh, Jasper we brought in recently, and he's like a CSS master. Um, we have Gabriel, who works at Intel. He's been, he actually was leading the development effort on pop-up. Uh, we have Matt, who works with me at Filament Group. Um, he's also a CSS master. Uh, we have Jason Scott, who's a committer from RIM, which is really exciting. Uh, and then uh, we have Maurice, who's been helping us with docs and triage. So you know, as a project, we really do want to involve as many people as we can. And so you know, if you are interested in getting involved, I would definitely encourage you to reach out to us. And everyone here became involved in the project just by really being involved in the issue tracker, helping us triage issues, doing pull requests. And if you do that, I'm always keeping an eye out, and I will be like, hey, you want to actually join us on the team? And then that's kind of the path to being a committer. And it's been really good for the project. Uh, you know, we have, like I said, so many devices and so much complexity that we were starting to kind of get a little buried in, in issues. And just in the last six to eight weeks, you know, we've, we've cut the number of open t uh, tickets from getting close to 600 down to under 350, which is really exciting. Uh, the other thing is we get a lot of contributions from the community, and we want to turn those around quickly in the form of reviewing pull requests and giving feedback. Um, and that number, we were actually recently at, at 12, you know, so we really have been cutting that down because we really want to make sure that we're, um, you know, looking at the code contributions from the community quickly. And we can do more parallel initiatives, and we'll talk about that a little bit. So let's talk about what's coming up. So. Um, the first thing that's coming up is 1.1.1, which is our first maintenance release for 1.1. And I just pushed the button on the blog post uh, half an hour ago or so. So uh, we are just released RC1. The plan with this is we think this is really solid. If nothing major comes up, we're just going to go final uh, really soon. So it'll be within a week or two. Um, this has over 50 uh, bug fixes and improvements. Uh, we've been improving the, docu the documentation quite a bit. We're always adding uh, more, more information there. A couple interesting things in 1.1 I just wanted to point out. So uh, the number one issue that we ran into after we released uh, is that we had this mysterious issue where on just certain pages, they would get really slow. And it was, we, had this, we had this test page with 500 list items, which is a bad idea anyway, but it's there for that reason. And uh, we just noticed like if you would scroll halfway down the page and you click a link, it would take a really long time for something to happen. And if you went to the bottom, it would probably crash on you. And we were like, that's not good. That's definitely a performance regression. And there were, it was like, there were all these theories on what this could be and uh, all sorts of different approaches. And it turns out that it wasn't anything but the event system. It was actually all about transitions. So in 1.1, we introduced the, a new transition so that when you're on a page, it fades out and, does its, or, and then it fades back in or it does a flip. And that's all well and good, except apparently what happens in mobile browsers is when you scroll down, it keeps all that stuff in memory. So if you were on a 20,000 pixel tall page, it was trying to animate a 20,000 pixel tall thing, which doesn't work. So uh, we now have this uh, little safety valve that we've built in. So we basically say, um, if you're more than a, if you're scrolled down more than a few screenfuls, we're just going to bag on the transition. And that's a configurable option here. That's get max scroll for transition. And this is sort of something we had to plumb in at the end because mobile devices kind of handle this in an odd way. So. This is now back to being super fast. I tested a 2,640 list item page, and it was really fast. Um, like I said, we also do quite a bit of stuff in PhoneGap uh, Cordova. Uh, a lot of people use it. It's uh, you know we're a very popular combination, and so we spend quite a bit of time making sure that our stuff works really well with them. 
Uh, in 111, there was some sort of mysterious CSS things that was causing Flickr in some cases, and we landed a couple uh, fixes for that. So that now should be resolved. So grab, grab your 111. The other thing is Jasper uh, is a madman, and he spent like two weeks going through and making sure that uh, every form element and every button and every possible permutation is exactly as consistently sized as it possibly can be. So and we're, we're off by two or three pixels here and there, and now he went and did everything perfectly. So this is part of the polishing that we're trying to do with the library is just go through everything with a fine tooth comb and make sure what we already have is really good uh, before we start adding too much other stuff. So like I said, uh, help us test. This uh, is out now. And if you do find issues, please uh, report them to us. And uh, if we don't have any major ones, we will be releasing that really soon. So the next item is 1.2. And so for 1.2, we're sort of adopting a, a new release strategy, which is to keep it really focused. And so for all of these dot releases, we're trying to really just introduce one major feature, usually a new widget. And then in addition to that, doing maybe a refactor on one of our existing plugins or adding some smaller features, but keeping the releases pretty small, pretty concise so that we can release them um, more regularly. So we're shooting to be doing roughly quarterly releases for these dot releases. So we'll be rolling out features pretty consistently. Uh, we were hoping to get this release for uh, today, but we're, we want to spend a little more time polishing it. So we're going to be shooting for doing an alpha of 1.2 next week. And to have that hopefully be released sometime late July or early August at the latest. So I just wanted to show you really quickly uh, the, the pop-up widget and just explain what it does. So uh, this is also part of the new philosophy of instead of building a lot of really specific things, trying to build some nice, uh, more generic tools that will let you build whatever UI you want. Um, from a markup perspective, this is very similar to dialogue. So you know, the dialogue right now is kind of a, it changes pages. But you know, it's, the idea here is you start just in our progressive enhancement approach, you start with a link that anchors down to a div that has an ID, pretty basic stuff. And then by adding a, a data rail pop-up to the link, you're telling the framework that, hey, I want this to actually be um, triggered as a pop-up. And you add a data roll of pop-up to the pop-up container. And it's really simple. When you hit the, the link or the button, it opens a pop-up. And it opens it up right where your finger actually pressed. Um, that's kind of the default behavior of the plugin. One of the things that we're doing uh, is thinking about how to deal with positioning other than just opening up near where you touched, like maybe centering it up on the screen. And that's one of the things we want to try to get done before we release this um, as an alpha. And just like dialogues, uh, you can use all the standard set of transitions just by setting a data transition on your pop-up. So it can open with a fade, a pop, nothing at all. Uh, I would definitely recommend sticking to the simple ones like pop and fade or none. Um, some of these crazy 3D ones, you know, they work, but it's, they're a little slower, a little weird. Uh, you also have the normal uh, theming patterns that we have, so you can set a data theme on the, the pop-up itself to set the, the look and feel of that. And then by default, there is no, the overlay theme that sits behind it is transparent, but that's how you dismiss it. But you can set an overlay theme on that and specify a swatch letter and, and give it that look and feel. Like I said, we, we didn't want to build um, lots of specific things. We wanted to sort of leverage what we already had and let you build interesting things. So we, here's just a few simple examples that we put in the docs page to, to explain uh, how this could work. So first of all, like for example, you could build a tooltip. A tooltip is just some text, right? And we're setting our theme to E here so it looks nice and yellow. That's a really simple example. Um, by putting a list view into a pop-up, you now have a menu. So, hooray. Um, you can also take the, all the same markup patterns that you might use in a dialogue, like headers and footers and things like that, stick it into a dialogue, into a pop-up, and now you have kind of more of a in-page uh, dialogue kind of thing. You could build like a little custom form, you know, a little login form, for example. Um, you could do a light box, right? You put an image into a pop-up, and now you have yourself a light box. You could put a carousel inside a pop-up, and now you've got a light box that you can swipe through. Uh, you can put a Google map into this, right? And now you've got a map that pops up. And really, the idea is you can put any widget you want into a pop-up. This is an example of an accordion. I'm not sure why you do it, but there it is. Uh, and by default, all these, the pop-ups really have very little appearance to them, you know? So they're meant to adapt to whatever content you put inside them. There's no padding by default. You can add padding if you want, um, if you're putting things like paragraphs of text. But if you want to put a widget like this, it can go right to the edge, really, really seamless. 
So if you want to play with this now, it's actually up um, jQueryMobile.com slash test points to master. And so does Google. So uh, if, you, <laughs> if you search for things for jQuery Mobile, Google routes you to, to master, which is really helpful. Um, but if you just navigate to pages and dialogues, there's a pop-up link there, and then you can play with all these examples. And in the future, what we're planning on doing, like I said, is um, adding more widgets, but doing it in a really regular way, um, and keeping regular releases. Uh, we're going to be doing quite a bit of work with performance tuning. Uh, John Bender is going to be focusing on that specifically. So not only getting pages to load even faster, but also getting things like touch performance to be more responsive. Uh, the other big goal for the year is, is to be focusing on tablet layouts, which introduces all sorts of interesting things with the nav model and supporting overflow regions and things like that. So um, making things work. Uh, from a responsive uh, approach like the docs right now, starting with mobile first and then having multi-column layouts kind of adapt as you have a larger screen is something that we want to give some tools to let people do that more easily. And like Scott Gonzalez talked about, uh, UI harmonization is sort of one of the other big goals of the project. And that's why I'm being somewhat vague about our roadmap right now, because I really do want to figure out kind of what we're doing with UI. And we might be investing quite a bit more time in the UI side of things, getting these projects more closely aligned than just pushing out more widgets. Uh, other things I wanted to mention is Theme Roller. So uh, you, we released Theme Roller when we released the library. We made some changes for 1.1. I just wanted to quickly point out. So you'll see there's an, a new top bar on top of Theme Roller here. And it just has a couple of cool features. Uh, Tyler, before he rolled off, added uh, a full undo redo stack. So you can make some changes, and then you can undo back, which is really cool. Uh, we also added version support, so now you can, now that we have multiple versions, you can actually choose which version you're building a theme for from this dropdown. And the kind of import feature also now is built to allow for easy upgrades. So if you have a 1.0 theme or a 101 theme, you can just go to the import, paste in your theme, and say, I want to upgrade this to 1.2 or 111 or whatever it is, and it will just automatically create that theme for you. And it actually imports it, and you can do some more editing and then download it. So wanted to make that as easy as possible. Uh, other things in the works, uh, the big thing here is that we are writing new API docs that are going to be in the XML format just like core and UI. So I'm sure that's very exciting news for everyone. That way, everything can be consumed you know, in whatever way you want. You can build an app that consumes the, the docs. Um, and then we're also going to be using this more for the, the documentation we have now. So we'll be pulling in data from here to populate uh, the more tutorial style documentation that we have. Uh, we have one more thing. Um, we now have a download builder, which is very exciting news. Uh, this is actually launched today. So you can go out to jQueryMobile.com slash download dash builder. Uh, Gislin's been doing some awesome work on putting this whole thing together. Uh, earlier, we did a lot of work with AMD to kind of sort out our dependencies. And that's being used now to uh, surface this download builder. So, and we've, the library has always been very decoupled. We spent quite a bit of work months ago making sure all the widgets were decoupled. Uh, this just gives you a small sample of the options. So we've really broken this thing up. So we want to make sure that you can, you can pick exactly what you want and build a really customized build that's as light as possible. So you know, the, the full version is great for development, but when you're doing production, get rid of the transitions you're not using, get rid of the widgets you're not using, and really skinny it down. So the library is already fairly small, but this makes it that much smaller. Uh, this is something that is going to work from 1.1.1 and forward, just because of the, the code changes we needed to do to support this. So um, this is something we're going to use going forward. And this is alpha. So you know it's uh, brand new. And we definitely want to capture any issues that people are running into. So please do log the issues. There's a separate GitHub tracker for this project. So it's uh, the jQuery mobile builder. Uh, GitHub project under jQuery. So please log issues. We've been having a lot of people doing alpha testing, but I'm sure now that we've got 600 people here, uh, we're going to get a lot more issues. This is going to get interesting. But uh, yeah, we're very excited about this feature. Um, that's pretty much it. I just wanted to encourage people, you know, get involved. You know, we're, everything we're doing is on GitHub, our issue tracker, our code, um, our wiki, all those things. And you know, we really, we really do welcome your input and uh, look forward to working with you. Uh, support jQuery, and I'd like to thank all of our sponsors as well. And lastly, um, I just put a page up on the jQuery mobile uh, site, and if anyone has devices, new or old, that they'd like to contribute to the project, we'd really appreciate that. Um, we now have 10 people on the project. They're scattered all around the world, and so 
if there's an issue that comes up, I can't assign certain issues to certain people because they don't have the right devices. So the more devices we get, the more everyone can have a nice uh, test lab to, to debug issues faster. So please, if you have an old phone, we love old, junky, especially junky Android phones, give them to us. When you've upgraded to your, your Jelly Bean phone, give us your 2.1 or 2.2 or 2.3. Uh, but we're really looking for any sort of uh, tablets or phones or e-readers. The more, the more variety we have, the better everything will be. And so really appreciate uh, donations on that front. So that's it. Thanks.